HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to this best of edition of HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk. Today we're going to show you some great highlights from this past year. We start off with the Board of Selectmen recognizing some of the many hardworking employees that keep the town of Hopkinton running. At this past week's Board of Selectmen meeting, the board started off the meeting by recognizing three town employees for their incredible work. Denise Hildreth, John Neese, and John Westerling. Selectman will recognize town employee Denise Hildreth, Director of Youth and Family Services, who received the Unsung Hero Award on June 20th, 2018 from the Massachusetts Commission on the Status of Women. Um, thank you. So um, this was an award that was recommended by Representative Dykema. Um, I was able to go to the State House with my husband and receive the award with, I think, 133 other women from across the Commonwealth. Um, you know, very humble women, women in positions of great authority all across the Commonwealth. I think this is just a tremendous honor. So for a social worker, um, to get an award for giving is like getting an award for living. So it's just part and parcel of what we do. Um, we don't often get recognition and certainly that's not something that um, feels comfortable for me um, but it's nice to get so I appreciate your recognizing me and also representative Dykema for making the recommendation. Denise um, on behalf of your colleagues at Town Hall we want to thank you for your fantastic contributions to this community uh, your talent your passion is clearly making a difference thank you. Thank you. And next among our honored guests is John Neese. He is our principal assessor, who is the first recipient of the Robert Ella Executive Director, Executive Director Scholarship from the Massachusetts Association of Assessing Officers. The association established an Executive Director Award, which is presented to the assessor who is dedicated to mentoring others through their friendship and leadership. Hello. <clears throat> so I'm very low key, and I don't really like to be recognized, but <laughs> since you made me come tonight, um, thank you. Um, I am one of about 1,200 assessors across the state. Uh, Bob Elia was our first executive director. He has now passed away. The scholarship um, was set up in his honor, and uh, he was one of my mentors, and I am especially proud to be, uh, to be honored by the association. So. But he just does such a great job, and, it's, and, 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 it, and as Brian had said, it's, it's, a, it's a hard job, and to try and keep everybody um, uh, satisfied. You know, and, and still be able to bring bring the money into the town, and really, it, it's because of we, the work that you do is that um, is one of the reasons why we we consistently stay in the black in this town. So thank you very much. Is our Department of Public Works director. Mr. John Westerling. Uh, John is the president of the New England chapter of the American Public Works Association. The New England chapter received the Presidential Award for Chapter Excellence in recognition of its outstanding contributions and service to its membership, profession, and community. And John is the recipient. Congratulations, John. Through the chair, I was humbled to have received this award. Um, as the, the chapter president. And first, I want to say that I'm very fortunate to work for a community that allows me to take part in associations like this. So my thanks to the Board of Selectmen and my thanks to the town manager. Um, this was received on behalf of professionals from Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, and over a 1,000 members. So it was an, an honor to receive that. Thank you. Thank you. To see our DPW act the way they do and get things done and get it done with a smile on their face. The guys are always waving and having some fun out there while they're working, which I love. Uh, I just think you guys and you in particular represent the town well and, 
I think it's your leadership style that, that makes it happen. So uh, good for you, and, and we're, we're lucky to have you on the team. And I'm excited that you're moving closer to town. I have a little secret on Mr. Wrestling I won't put out there, but I think that's great for us as well. So good for you. This past summer, Weston Nurseries hosted their second annual Blooms, Brews, and Barbecue event to raise money for the Jimmy Fund. The place was packed for the wildly successful event. Weston Nurseries hosted their second annual Blooms, Brews, and Barbecue event this past Saturday. The proceeds will be donated toward the annual Jimmy Fund Walk. Leading up to the event, Weston Nurseries had raised over $90,000 for the Jimmy Fund. Some, uh, great turnout here today. We're in just about the middle of the event. Uh, how's everything going so far? Well, very well. It's uh, a little past the halfway point, about 4 o'clock. And I think we've had a lot more people than last year, which is good. The uh, event last year was tremendous, raised a lot of money. I think we're gonna we're gonna beat that this year. Yeah, a lot of families, a lot of kids, a lot of pets. It's been a pretty oh great gosh, day. Oh my gosh, pets! <laughs> so I think many we puppies. have to I think we have to call this a pet event yeah. this year. A lot of dogs, but yeah, I'm glad the family showed up. The kids have plenty to do. We got cornhole, we got giant Jenga. Yep. Um, Connect Four. Connect Four, it's... a couple of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, once in a while you hear this big bang and all of a sudden it's because the Jenga board collapsed. Yep. Scary and event. kids run, around, run, run away. Yep. Run away. <laughs> and this is uh, you know, Samantha Rose from the Jimmy Fund and, and you've had a lot of people enter the raffle yep. prizes uh, here. Today. Yep, so our opportunity drawing. So far we've sold $350 worth of tickets, okay. which is great. Um, got some great prizes and I think we'll still sell some more. Yep, and we'll announce those around 5 o'clock. Yep. And a few people had signed up for the walk team. Yep. We got about 10 or 11 so far, and our goal is to raise $25,000 this year. Yep. Hopefully, we beat that. So, anyway, this is a great event. We're in the middle of it, and we can't wait to do it next year. But Tom will show some B roll to give the effect of what it's like. We got a lot of beer vendors here, they're all doing very well. Yep. People are having fun. It's it's not out of control. No. It's uh, got a great band playing. Great band. I think we're on the third out of fourth bands, and uh, the food is phenomenal too. Yes. So I think we'll try to keep it kind of similar to this next year. I think yeah. Looking I good. think that's a good plan. <laughs> so that's it. All right. Terrific. And uh, how's everything going over here at the donation table? It's good. We're getting a lot of gifts. A lot of people interested, and a lot of people just want to give to the Western Nurseries Walk Team such devotion, which is just amazing. And I think a true testament to what you guys have done here is a look at the fun-filled day of music, great food, tasty beverages, and a good time for the whole family.
every Tuesday at 2.30 p.m., you can take the young ones to visit Rebel the Therapy Dog at the Hopkinton Public Library. Here's a look at a visit from Rebel this past summer. Rebel the Therapy Dog made her weekly visit to the Hopkinton Public Library this past Tuesday. Rebel is a Swiss mountain dog who enjoys meeting people and you can find her in the young adult room every Tuesday from 2.30 until 3.30 p.m. So it always looks like she's not going to get it. How long have you worked with Rebel? Um, we've had, mostly since January. Nice. Yeah, I've had her about a year and a half now. Cool. You know, and she's two and a half. Is it great? A great relationship? Between yeah, you? we have a lot she's of fun. Huge. Isn't she a big girl? <laughs> she's only two and a half. How do you how do you train her to do all this stuff? You know, just some practice. And I used to go into a drop-in obedience class. Ready, sit on Saturdays and that was a lot of fun too but that would just reinforce our relationship together and give her a chance to be around other dogs where she wouldn't necessarily have to play with the other dogs but still behave around them and you know kind of co peacefully coexist. <laughs> what kind of dog do you guys have? A uh, flathead. Do you have a picture? Uh, he's like a brindle coat with He's about as big as she is. Yeah. I think she's thirsty. Good girl. Ready? Get it. <laughs> Good job. One more. Ready? It's really boring. In a way, don't you think? Ready? Get it. Ah, I didn't get it. Uh, I heard you do other events. Do you want to talk a little about those? Like, do you work at the school during the year? I have had a chance to uh, go into the middle school and the high school, um, Hopkins and Center School, which I guess, you know, hopefully I'll get a chance to visit friends in Marathon. So it's been a lot of fun. And also the Senior Center. And on, I try about twice a, um, twice a month. Go to mm -hmm. I go to a hospital in Worcester, the Worcester Recovery Hospital, mm -hmm. with a group from Tufts, and uh, we visit patients there as well. That's so nice. to give her a good variety of people that she visits, she really likes this age group. Yeah. How many kids do you usually get visiting her on these Tuesdays? Um, it depends. It's getting bigger. I mean, some days just maybe two, maybe two to fifteen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you know, I work with Denise Hildreth, the Director of Youth and Family Services, and she reached out to the heads of all the town departments. Mm -hmm. And the library came back and said that they would like a visit from, um, from Rebel. And it's worked out really well. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. A pair of Hopkinton Girl Scouts were recognized with the ultimate prize for a Girl Scout, the Gold Award. Here's a look. On Tuesday, August 7th, the Board of Selectmen hosted their meeting from Hopkinton Town Hall for the first time in over a year. I think the last time we had a Board of Selectmen's meeting in this room was in April of 2017, about 16 months ago. So uh, many thanks to everyone who's participated in making, uh, getting us back home, all the hard work and all the forbearance of the townspeople, of the town hall employees and staff. I can remember at one point uh, Mr. Kamalo's office was a chair in the corner of the fire station. <laughs> so we've come a long way. So welcome home to everybody. I think we need to take a second and thank Bob and everyone at HCAM for all the hard work that they did putting us up down there for the last year and a half. So thank you very much for all the adjustments and everything that you guys did to make us feel Absolutely. Cooler than we are tonight. <laughs> Welcome back anytime. <laughs>
duly noted. Thank you. During the meeting, the Board of Selectmen recognized a couple of Girl Scout Gold Award recipients. The Board of Selectmen will recognize the Girl Scout Gold Award member uh, recipients, Melissa Hayes and Grace Darkow of Girl Scout Troop 72233 for projects which inspired STEM interests in young girls and Karen Bograd has been their Girl Scout Troop Leader. I wish there were the same kind of ceremony for the Girl Scout Gold Awards that there are for the Eagle Scouts, but I, so I want everyone to understand tonight what a really, really special event this is and a, an enormous accomplishment um, for these young women. So they took, they took part in a, um, com a sumo competition where they had to knock other robots off a um, field and the last person stand, last robot standing won. And they worked in like teams of three or four. Yeah, other high school students will be continuing the program in future years and all like the um, high school robotics program has all of like the materials for each year. So it can be picked up at any point. Um, so my project was to teach young girls um, in first grade about engineering. So I taught them about like the engineering design process. Um, I also taught them about sorry, um, other female engineers and I led them through with my mentors a whole bunch of different activities where they built things and used engineering, um, such as like building like a toy or building a small house. I used a lot of like matching games and stuff and like all the activities there was like three for like building activities so they could like move along really quickly. So thank you and good evening. My name is Danielle Baltinos. I'm the Director of Volunteer Engagement at Girl Scouts of Eastern Massachusetts. Um, and I'm honored to be here tonight with all of you. The Gold Award is our most prestigious award in Girl Scouts. Starting in 1916, the best and brightest undertook sustainable projects that improve their communities in the world. The Gold Award has inspired girls to find greatness inside themselves and share their ideas and passions with their communities. Over the past 100 years, those who have earned the highest award in Girl Scouting reflect the vision of our, our movement's founder, Juliet Gordon Love. Juliet believed deeply in the importance of giving back to one's community <coughs> and sought to inspire the same in others. Nationally, only 13% of girls ages 14 to 17 earn the Gold Award. So we're very excited to be able to celebrate the work of two Hockey Team Girl Scouts for joining those prestigious ranks as Gold Award Girl Scouts. Grace Darkout and Melissa Hayes have demonstrated extraordinary leadership in making a difference in their community with measurable take action projects. Therefore, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Hopkinton, Massachusetts, join with Melissa and Grace's family and friends in recognition of their achievement in attaining, attaining the rank of Gold Award, signed under our hand and seal this 7th day of August, 2018. This is for Melissa, and this is for Grace. We also have a certificate of appreciation for Karen, if you would come up as well. Thank you very much. You are cleaning up. And maybe we can get some photographs now. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and from all of us at HCAM, happy holidays.
This past fall, the library celebrated their one-year anniversary in their new building. Here's a look at the festivities. The Hopkinton Public Library celebrated their one-year anniversary this past weekend. The festivities kicked off on Friday night with the Books in Bloom display created by the Hopkinton Garden Club. Yeah, it's been a really big, I just sent an email to all the staff today saying, we made it for a year. Um, it's been just an amazing year and very busy and people have really responded to the building and the library, which has been just great. Um, so this, this weekend, um, Tonight is the, the Books and Bloom opening that we're filming this at now. So we have eight displays that have been made by the Garden Club members um, that will be going up around the library in different locations. And they will be in the library through approximately midweek, the 31st of October. Um, there will be a scavenger hunt starting tomorrow. And if you find all eight displays in the library, then you can get a coupon for a free book at the Friends Book Sale, which takes place November 2nd and 3rd. Um, and then tomorrow, uh, the trustees will also be doing cider and donuts in the morning, just a little drop-in, fun thing. The foundation will be revealing the Thousand Homes for Hopkinton donors plaque at 11.30. And we have Steve Spector performing at 2 o'clock in the afternoon to celebrate this building. And we will have tours with the trustees on the hour from 10 to 2. All right, terrific. And um, would encourage the uh, Garden Club to get involved and do these displays. They just told me we'd like to do it, and I said, great. They did this last year when we opened, so we're hoping it's going to become just an annual regular thing. And I think it's just a really nice way to bring two groups that don't necessarily seem to have a lot of common together to do something that, that does connect them and to make the library beautiful um, in a new way for a few days and you know just bring the community into the space in a new and different way. When, when Hopkinton says they're going to do something, everybody pitches in and we get it done. We're a great town for that. And you know, and, and it's, a, it's, it's a long process. And people really dedicate themselves with their money, their time, and their, and their sweat. You know, I, I'm, I'm speaking for the Board of Selectmen, but um, a member here, uh, former chairman, who really pushed us. And Ben was, ben was um, uh, the spearhead for the Board of Selectmen several years ago and said, we've got to get this done. And we all we stood behind him and, and got it done. And, and Ben, really, thank you very much for, for doing it. Uh, you know, to the Delbridge family, Middlesex, the directors, you know, everybody really thank you very, very much for giving this town a, a crown jewel, something to, to build our downtown around. You know, it's, 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 we're already seeing it in, in, in new businesses coming to town. The, the homes right around the downtown are, 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 are growing and getting better and better. Values are going up. People are moving in. Schools are getting great. It's, it's just fabulous, so thank you very much for everybody, everything everybody's done. It's getting better and better. Thank you. In just a minute, I just have a, a few more things to let you know about, and, and one is um, about Hopkinton Public Library Foundation, is that you know we're a core board of nine people, um, including Scott and seven other members who are here. Do you all want to raise your hand or? Yay. And um, we are still um, active in the community and we are still here to support the library and work in conjunction with the Friends of the Library and the trustees. We are very much still um, supporting the library and supporting the, the mission and any sort of financial support. We are going to continue to do that for the next few years or the foreseeable future. So we just want to let you know that we are still here in support of the library. And we're so honored to be here now that We've mentioned it's been exactly one year since the library opened. And I just want to draw attention to the fact that business is booming. Um, they said if you build it, you will go up 20 or 30 percent. Hopkinton has blown those numbers away by far. And in particular, the gorgeous children's room, this beautiful young adult room, has um, really brought in the youth and the children in our community. And we are super proud of that. And um, as everyone here has, has spoke and agreed that it really is a community center for people of all ages. So we're super proud of that. So. 
Um, and then the last um, piece, I'll turn it over to Scott Richardson, who's going to give us our toast before we actually take a look at the plaque. So uh, again, thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you, Laura, and the foundation, and the trustees, and the friends. Everybody <coughs> really did yeoman's work. And uh, again, another uh, uh, kudos to Ben. Um, as we were getting down to the wire, he actually did have to take a member of the planning board out into the hallway and <laughs> convince him that, in fact, this project needs to move forward. So again, without his uh, tutelage to that member, uh, we may not be standing here. Well, we probably would be, but uh, it was just an example of leadership, uh, really exemplary leadership. So as Laura said, uh, we are going to do a toast. Uh, so oh, thank you. So if people want to, this, this is non-alcoholic. So uh, uh, if anybody wants to grab, grab a glass, uh, please do. And uh, before the unveiling, we're going to, again, have a one-year uh, anniversary toast to the library. Again, a, a crown jewel in the downtown and for the whole town, obviously. So cheers. 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 cheers.